There's a lot of recipes out there that call for using raw eggs, such as hollandaise sauce, or making your own mayo, uh, eggnog, or even meringues. The problem is salmonella food poisoning uh, is a risk, so you'll want to pasteurize the eggs to kill the bacteria. On today's show, we're going to show you how to do that yourself using a sous vide immersion water circulator. This tool will allow you to precisely control the water temperature for the right amount of time to kill the bacteria and reduce the risk of the poisoning. Also, this is great for those people that either raise their own chickens and have eggs, or maybe you're cooking and all you have is just regular eggs, or maybe your store is out of pasteurized eggs. So this is an option. So join us as I show you how to use the sous vide method of pasteurizing eggs. When it comes to pasteurizing food, it's a matter of time and temperature. For example, you can pasteurize eggs for roughly three minutes to five minutes, depending upon the size, whether they're large or jumbo, at 140 degrees, or at a reduced temperature, such as 135 degrees, such as 57 Celsius, for around 75 minutes, or even at a lower temperature, like 55 Celsius, 131 Fahrenheit, for around two hours. Um, the importance of knowing some of this, if you are gonna pasteurize yourself, is that with eggs, when they're raw, we know how they look, right? The, um, the yolks and the whites are obviously liquid, right? But as you start to heat them up, the uh, whites will start to get cloudy and then as it continues to get cooked, uh, the yolks will get hard. And so the texture really changes. And unfortunately, the yolks change substantially at 140 degrees. So it's kind of hard to pasteurize them yourself at 140, knowing that you want to kill salmonella bacteria, you're going to partially cook your eggs. Now, if your recipe isn't really worried about the texture that much, um, then that might be okay. But if you want to do it at a lower temperature, such as the 135 or the 131 Fahrenheit, it's a longer time. And that's where doing it in, you know, just a regular pot on the stove, where you're, you know, adding boil boiling water to cold water with a digital thermometer, knowing that you only got to maintain it at 140 for three minutes, and if you do it too long, you just cooked it, that's enough stress. But if you're trying to do it for longer cook times at a lower temperature, 75 minutes is a long time to worry about an exact, you know, 35 or, or 135 degrees. But that's where using an immersion circulator, uh, such as a sous vide method works really well, because it takes care of the temperature for you and obviously they have a you know, countdown and everything for you that keeps track of the time for you. Um, sous vide also is a little more forgiving, which is great for eggs, in that if you cook it a minute too long, it's not going to hurt you, right? Whereas at a higher temperature, you know, you just cook your egg. And then if you cook it even at a lower temperature, such as the uh, 55 Celsius, 131 degrees, it is a lot longer, so it is a little more forgiving, but it lets you go a little bit longer than the higher temperatures, so you're not gonna get as cloudy egg whites 
if that really matters to you. If you're trying to do a recipe where you're trying to beat your whites and you're wondering why you can't get your stiff peaks or soft peaks, and that might be you just cooked it too long. I mean, I've heard stories of people doing this for three hours and wondering why they can't make mayonnaise, and it's just the wrong temperature and time. You'll see in the pot here, I've got some water. I've made sure that I'm putting water in the um, bag here. You might ask, why don't I just put the eggs directly in the water here? Well, when you have this circulator, if the egg cracks, you don't want contamination to get into a circulator because that, that's something you got to clean. If you put in a bag like a Ziploc bag or some other bag, then you don't have to worry about that. If there is a crack, there's not a problem. Um, in this case, I have six eggs for a recipe I'm going to be cooking, and I've already brought these eggs to um, room temperature or close to it, so they're not being shocked by warm water. And because I am putting in water that will be heated by the uh, circulator, that I'm not worried about um, air in the bag. You know, if you don't put water in the bag and it's just strictly air, it might act as an insulator and it might work out all that good for you. By putting the water in there, the water will heat the eggs and maintain the same temperature as what the uh, circulator is set for. So that's ideal. I can leave the bag open. I'm not really worried about anything. And here, I'm just going to maybe clip it. I <laughs> Sometimes I do that to make sure the bag doesn't go flying all over the place. Um, I don't know if that's really going to help today, just because this is a large bag. We've got eggs down there. And the circulator here doesn't put that much of a current. It's a really gentle uh, output of the water. So I'm not too worried about that. So I think we're okay in terms of that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug it in and get this thing started. My goal today is, is since I'm not in a big hurry and because I can do this well in advance of, of what I need to cook, um, I'm just going to go ahead and do the 131 degree uh, method just because um, that gives me more flexibility. So when I cook the recipe I want, you know, I'm not worried about it being too high of a temperature and you know, maybe I you know, ruined it or something. Okay, you can see I'm using a Cisno um, water circulator here. I'm gonna hit the power button, hold that on for a second. Now it's on. It's showing a working time of two hours, which is gonna work okay. It shows our current temperature is 115. I'm just using some warm tap water. And I have this set for 128 degrees. I need to actually kick that up a few degrees. So I'm going to kick that up to 131. That works. I think I just hit right there. So that's running. You'll see that we got a very slight, um, I don't know, current. It's just moving the water very gently. The bag is not flying anywhere. The eggs are just sitting there happy. So that's really good. The temperature is coming up now. We can see we're up to 126 degrees. Um, there's not really a lot of water in there, just really just maybe a couple of quarts of water. We're close. It's showing a current temp of 131. It's set for 131. Now we have a working time. So it should be counting up actually um, in minutes. And then once it hits two hours, it should beep and let us know. And then I can go ahead and pull this out. So it's going to do what it needs to do for a couple hours, and then we'll be back when it's done. And it went to uh, slightly dim on the uh, display, but it's definitely uh, counting up for us. All right, it's now been two hours. This thing was beeping for about the last minute or so, and it's just letting us know it's time to continue our uh, project here, right? So the one thing cool about cooking at the 131 Fahrenheit um, I believe 55 centigrade, is that we have lots of room for error here. Had there been salmonella bacteria in or on these eggs, it would have been killed at roughly 90 minutes. We cook for two hours just to make sure, so that's good. If you cook at a higher temperature, such as 57 centigrade, 135 Fahrenheit, um, you only need to cook roughly 75 minutes. 
Um, and then of course, like I said, if you cook at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, it's only for maybe three minutes or five minutes if you're cooking large eggs or should I say jumbo eggs. The problem is you have to stop the cooking ASAP, especially at the higher temps, because we want to preserve the texture of the eggs as best as we can. We have a lot of lay, layway. We have a lot of leeway with how I did it today at the lower temperature for a much longer time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, remove the immersion um, circulator. Let's drain some water out, and it's hot, obviously. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it on a silicone mat. What I did was I have a Taylor, or in this case, a Maverick um, digital remote. Um, thermometer. I wanted just to have a double set of eyes looking at our uh, temperature just to make sure it's accurate because you could argue and say hey this thing is reading the ambient water temperature of the vessel but not necessarily the water with the eggs. Maybe the Ziploc bag is acting as an insulator and maybe it's not cooking at the 131 like we need it to. So this just helps prove that it did actually maintain at 131 where the eggs are, and that's what we really needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump out this um, hot water we have in here. Make sure I'm careful with the eggs, don't want them breaking and stuff, right? Because the eggs are still, treat them as being raw. They're not hard boiled, they're nothing. They're just basically cooked to a temperature where the texture resembles raw eggs, but they were cooked to a temperature that should kill salmonella bacteria had there been any present. And right here, I just have the eggs um, in a um, ice water bath, as you can see. Um, at this point, I can just put the eggs in there by themselves. They don't necessarily need to be in the, in the bag anymore. We use the bag primarily as a way to get them out of the hot pot of water without burning ourselves or having to fish for them with something, clampers, but also to help protect the emergent circulator from contamination had an egg cracked with it directly in that water. So being in the bag helps prevent all that stuff. At this point, we can just go ahead and put them straight in the water. Um, I kind of thought it might be a good idea to leave them in the Ziploc bag um, only so they're not shocked with the cold water. But on the other hand, the 131 is not an incredibly hot water. It's enough that it can burn yourself, especially if you hold your fingers in there long enough. But the eggs um, sitting in this water with the bag for just a few moments, they've cooled down a little bit. And um, I think we're going to be good there. And then you just see they're just in there. So I'm going to leave them in there uh, for a few moments, just enough for them to chill. That'll definitely uh, stop any cooking. And then at that point, we treat them as raw eggs as they basically are. That means I do not put them back in the same carton that they came from. Uh, you want to continue to refrigerate them until you need them. The advantage of doing this is we can do it in advance. So if you're going to make a recipe that needs these today, do this early. Do this yesterday, do this a week ago. However long you trust your eggs in the refrigerator is pretty much what you do with this. Um, this just basically helps with the salmonella part of it. They can still go rotten from old age and all that other good stuff. So we're gonna use these eggs in an eggnog video. We're going to uh, make some homemade eggnog, um, both for a couple of reasons. Um, we were uh, doing a, a store-bought, not really a, a non-dairy eggnog, but more of a vegetarian rice nog that didn't really taste anything like a, a regular eggnog. So Amy is still yet to try to enjoy something closer to an eggnog. And I also bought a store-bought regular eggnog, and I'd like to try to compare a homemade eggnog to a store-bought. Uh, so in another video, we'll be you know, doing a taste test and all that good stuff, and we'll be using it. So we'll be cracking these eggs open. It'll be interesting to see, do these crack open and look similar to a totally raw egg that hasn't been cooked for two hours, right? So stay tuned, we'll have a link 
down below for that in the description. Thank you for watching this show. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe below, give us a comment and a thumbs up, and visit our website at Amy Learns to Cook. We're also on Pinterest and Twitter at Amy Learns to Cook and Instagram at Cooking with Amy. Ooh, these are gonna make some fine, fine eggnog, you think, boo? Mm -hmm. So check out our next video. Drinking eggnog with Eric.